What's the word, y'all? So we're about the quarter mark of the NBA season. I decided that once we start hitting these milestones a quarter, halfway, three quarters, and then the end of the season, I want to document my feelings about every single NBA team. Because you know a lot of stuff can change from a day-to-day -day basis, so it's definitely going to change from a month-to-month -month basis. So yeah, this is like a temperature check for the first month of the season. We're going to be talking about every NBA team for about a minute, some a little bit less, maybe some a little bit more. But I, I'm going to try my hardest to stick to my timer. And yeah, there are some teams that I'm going to talk in depth about more than others because once we get to this part of the season, I have decided on certain teams, hey, y'all going to get me peeking in on y'all games, but I'm not about to deep dive into your game. So yes, um, your favorite team might not get talked about in depth as others, but that's just the way of the word. I can't watch all 30 NBA teams to the highest standard. This should feel like a podcast, low key. And since it should feel like a podcast, let's get to our sponsor. Y'all know who it is. It is Prize Picks. They are the presenting sponsor of this channel. Hit that link in the description and use code Kenny because they are matching up to a hundred dollar deposit for all new players. Prize Picks has been definitely a bright spot for this NBA season for me. And nah, it's not just because I be winning every night, but because it's fun to try to look at these numbers and determine the best five man team. At least that's the way I look at it. Five man team every night. So if you're new around here, let me explain. And so we got points, rebounds, assists, three pointers made. There's gonna be free throws. There's fantasy score and you see a number and you decide for yourself if we got Carlton Towns at 20.5 I can click him and I decide in my mind if I think he's going to have the over or the under that so if I was going to make this lineup but a four-man play we got flex play and power play flex means that one of these players could miss and I still walk out in the green for three correct 1.5 or if I want to go big if all 40s hit on the power play I get 10 next the amount of money so join the rest of the game man we've already had over thousands of people to hit the link and use code Kenny um and I also got a league with me and the homies where we're competing every single night i am dominating that league y'all it seems like every night your boy is hitting in the green just last night five pick flex play for 225 it would have been more but jerry vanderbilt missed out on one rebound but your boy has been hitting and you could too if you hit that link in the description use code kenny thank you again to prize picks now let's get to talking about these teams whenever i do a video like this i'm always going through the comment section and there are people that do the time step thing. And, and I know there are people around the channel that appreciate the time stamp thing because you don't want to hear me talk about all 30 teams. I understand that. It's a lot of talking. But, but I just want y'all to watch the video, bro. Don't just skip to your favorite team. How about this? How about we make a deal? If you're going to skip to your favorite team, at, at, at least watch a little bit more. Don't just watch the one minute about the Hornets and just leave, bro. <laughs> Please. And there's no particular order. Actually, I'm literally spinning a wheel in front of me or whatever team it lands on. That's the team we're talking about. First, it is the Portland Trailblazers. Got my timer. Starting to talk about Damian Lillard. He is back to form, at least close to form. If you're one of those people that thought that Damian Lillard was about to struggle for the entire season, you're not really, really in tune with the NBA because he's Damian Lillard. We're talking about one of the greatest 75 players of all time, according to, according to some people. I'm not saying I agree with it completely, but uh, Damian Lillard, last five games, look at the stats right here. He's averaging 27, uh, seven and a half assists, 2.6 rebounds per, and he's been back up to form, but this team is the same team they are every single year. They're 10 and 10 at this moment, two game losing streak, and their team since Damian Lillard has been back to close to form. They have had the number two offense in the entire league. Nobody questioned whether or not the Portland Trailblazers are going to be able to score the ball. It's always been about the defense, and in that same stretch where they've been been the number two offense they've been the 28th worst defense it's the same recipe every season like when Luke Walton got fired we were talking about how how the Sacramento Kings had the worst defensive team almost of all time with the Portland Trailblazers weren't that far away from them. they were 29th in the league then but the offense was so good and because of that they're gonna make a playoff appearance if I was a Trailblazer fan I'd be kind of I've always said there's value in being decent, but it can only go so far. Once you've had eight seasons of just the same recipe and recipe, you got to get tired of it eventually. I've, I've been campaigning. F oh, we're already over the, the mark. Um, I've been campaigning <laughs> for them to split up that duo for some time now. Um, they made some moves this offseason with Larry Nance Jr. where you wanted them to pivot towards the different side of the ball. Nazir Little's in the lineup. Anthony Simon's playing really good, but they can't defend. And because of that, they're probably going to be a playoff team, but nothing much more than that. That minute really did creep up on me. The next thing we got is the Indiana Pacers. Let's talk about Indy, man. Listen, bro. We're going to talk about this when we get to the Bulls. Indiana Pacers beat up on my Bulls by 30. They, they dogged my Bulls. And then now people people going out to like, oh, out of context. Not oh, because they were like three days before. Out of context tweets. Everything that I said about the Indiana Pacers a week ago still stands. Where I know that they're going to be a good enough team to make a playoff appearance. But similar to what I said about the Portland Trailblazers being good enough to make the playoffs and just making a first round or maybe a second round has got to take a toll on the fan base. It's just that simple. I mentioned they have 10 players 
that are quality rotational players on other teams, but all together is just good enough to be the sixth seed or whatever seed they end up on. I said in that video, they're going to go on a win streak eventually, and people are like, oh, it's whatever, it's the Pacers. But but it's just like, ah, when will it stop? When are they going to do something, <laughs> whether it be in the front office or whatever, to, to pick a real direction? Because of right now, they're kind of teetering with just good or okay i mean i can't even say good at the moment because if i'm looking at the standings they're three games under so they're okay shout out to pacers fans though y'all are a passionate group and i mentioned that in my video so when y'all came at me i wasn't even i wasn't even mad i wasn't even mad the next thing is the sacramento Kings start the timer two and one since the luke walton firing and yesterday they played a triple overtime game against the against the lakers um buddy hill stepped back on lebron james had reese with a, like a 14 6 6 of four steals but the good thing about it is the air fox realized that hey nobody on the team on the lakers can stay in front of me other than maybe avery bradley and i can just run to the basket whenever i want to and do a layup and he did that over and over and over um, I'm not saying that since Luke Walton is gone, this team looks super rejuvenated, but they've won two out of their last three. Marvin Bagley, a player that was denying the access even going to a game a couple nights ago, has been playing quality minutes against the Lakers. He, like, he, I'm pretty sure he was perfect from the field. His defense is never going to really be like that. But he had a corner shot late in the game that was, like, super clutch. The, like, they had at one point basically given up on their former number two or number two overall pick. And now Alvin Gentry, like, bro, we need him out there playing because if anything, even, even if we want to trade him, we want him to be out there to, to show people he can hoop at least a little bit. So two and one. Huh. Very, very interesting. That's all I'm saying. Yes, sir. I got the Pelicans next. Let's start this time because I do got a stat in front of me waiting for this moment. The Pelicans had lost 22 straight when they trailed with a minute to play in the fourth quarter in overtime prior to tonight. They could not come back with a minute left or close a game with a minute left and they did it against the utah jazz um, um Devontae graham crazy shot um brandon ingram making that pass valentunas has been one of the bright spots for the season but a team that started off so historically bad since brandon ingram's been back in the lineup if i'm not mistaken they're a four and four in that stretch but Brandon Ingram, all-star caliber player, of course he's going to help the team. But the thing I like the most about the team, and I made a whole video because of this, man, is Herb Jones. Last night against Donovan Mitchell. We know Donovan Mitchell, one of the best scorers in the league, one of the best perimeter scorers in the league. Not against Herb Jones. He was everywhere, bro. If we're giving a plaque to Kenny's most favorite role players to watch, Herb Jones is like number one. Yeah. Seth Curry, is Seth Curry a role player or is he a superstar? Now, I don't know. Him and Seth Curry for opposite for opposite reasons are up there. Now we got the Orlando Magic. They just lost to my Bulls last night, but regardless, this is the team that's rebuilding, so I didn't expect them to beat the Bulls. At this point, they are at the bottom of the conference at 4-16, and 16, but even in that 4-16, and 16, they've played some really cool games. They beat the Knicks two times. Some of these games have been close. Franz Wagner's the most awkward player in the NBA, but in a good way, like, he, he had a bucket last night where he, like, ran baseline, did, like, this, like, over-the-shoulder hook against the Bulls, and it fell in, like, Oh, snap. Um, I still don't believe that he should be ranked higher than Shea Gilgis Alexander, though. But they do have a lot of bright spots. I've always been a fan of Window Card and Mobamba, so to see them both flourishing individually is really good. I like that Window Card that came out last night with a chip on his shoulder. Are y'all trading me away? Bet. I'm going to give y'all 26 or whatever it was. And he was going right at Vooch. He was going right at Derrick Jones Jr. Derrick Jones Jr. fouled out in 10 minutes because he couldn't guard Wendell Carter. I like the aggression, not just from this game from Wendell, but pretty much every game of the season because he realized there's nothing to lose. I'm playing on a rebuilding team. I just got a bag so I could just go out and play my game. The entire time he was in Chicago, he was saying, I want to be a four, I want to be a four, I want to be a four. And now with him playing alongside Mo Bamba, I guess he's guarding other fives, but he, he has the ability to set at the perimeter and hit shots. He's hit a crazy amount of threes season comparison to the rest of his career so shout out to Wendell okay see Thunder is next um Lou Dort is making his way into the MIP conversations in his last 10 games he's averaging 21 points per game five rebounds and two assists and in that time he's shooting 48 percent from the field and 38 percent from three and not to mention of course there's Lou Dort so we're gonna clamp up on the other side of the ball um my, my guy Cone I see I'm gonna keep it a buck there's one of the teams I'm not watching a ton of if anything I'll watch the highlights or the condensed version of OKC games but my boy Cone always keeps you up to date every single night Josh Giddy's throwing a crazy pass thought a uh, 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 threat in the needle and getting somebody open Jeremiah Robinson Earl has been good for them Shea is still struggling individually but no nope, I don't think anybody's looking at that other other than the Bleach Report employees, that this is the 30% from three is what Shea is about to be for the rest of his career, or the 40%. This is not this is not the case. Detroit Pistons is another team that I have not been watching a ton of. I do like watching Kay Cunningham, but everything else on the roster is kind of kind of hard for me to really tune into. You know what I'm saying? They got Jeremy Grant, 
who I've mentioned on Twitter plenty of times, or I guess on the podcast a couple times, I would love to see Jeremy Grant in the Bulls jersey. I know it's a, it's a pipe dream. We don't really have much to give y'all, but hey, I would love to make it happen. But I don't want to give up Patrick Williams, so I know it's not going to happen. Okay, Cunningham is slowly climbing up the ladder of the Rookie of the Year, which he should be there, um, of course. Isaiah Stewart, I like the way he addressed the media after the LeBron James thing, basically saying that whatever happened, happened. I think it was intentional, but whatever. He was basically saying he doesn't want his whole reputation to be based on that one moment of, of him being down in his career, which is a good perspective to have because as long as he's not doing this stuff on the regular, he should have a long NBA career, and you want to be known for more than just the dude that was trying to body slam LeBron. But then again, he was a boxer, so I guess he wouldn't... He wouldn't be body slamming a bomb. He probably gave him a little two-piece. We got the New York Knicks. Okay, I'm recording this very early on Saturday, literally right before I hit record. Um, if We found out that Kemba and Derrick Rose are out for tonight's game against the Hawks, which means, finally, maybe. May, I don't know, Tom Thibodeau's a crazy dude. We might get Emmanuel quickly starting. <laughs> which will be amazing because he does. I think he deserves to be a start at this point over Evan Fournier because Evan Fournier hasn't done a damn thing since the season opener. Um, the team in general, the starting five, has been struggling. I've been waiting for the day and the, since since the last time we talked about the Knicks, them having their starting five being one of the worst offensive teams in NBA history and then their bench five being very good. Um, I've been waiting for the moment for Tom Thibodeau to make the adjustments where, hey, Evan Fournier is coming off the bench. Or Kimba Walker, who's been really bad individually, come off the bench. He hasn't really done it. And maybe the rest of Derrick Rose or the rest of Kimba Walker, whatever it is, is the initiative that he needed to throw quickly into the lineup. Because when I watch the Knicks, quickly makes that team go. The Lakers. There was a quote that I saw on Reddit this morning where Anthony Davis says something along the lines of, We're the Lakers. We, we can't, I know we can't win 10, 12, 15 games in a row if we wanted to. What the hell does that mean, Anthony? If you want, what, what team is lacing up their sneakers and saying, we don't feel like going on a win streak right now? Stop it. Last night, honestly speaking, shout out to the Kings. Last night was an embarrassing loss for the Lakers at home at Crypto.com Arena or Center or whatever it's called because, not just because you lost the game because the NBA, anybody can win on any given night. The Bulls has lost to Houston. Anything can happen. But it's still in the fashion in which it happened where the offense for the, the last five minutes of the fourth quarter and then every quarter after that, every overtime after that, it was standing around, let's do something. I saw a tweet from Kurt, Kurt Goldsberry today saying that Anthony Davis is the least efficient jump shot shooter in the entire league this year. Top 75 player of all time, who takes a ton of jump shots, is the worst in the entire league at jump shots through the first 20 games of the season. Mind-blowing. You cannot win 10, 12, 15 games in a row because there is problems with your team. Cut it out. No, oh yeah, we yeah, yeah, we could be the best team in the league, but man, we don't really feel like it. The, the SpongeBob, I don't really stop. Come on, Anthony. I, I expect I expect more from you, bro. Legitimately, I expect more from you. The next team we get is the Minnesota Timberwolves. They were on a five-game win streak, and they lost it last night um, to the Charlotte Hornets, who's playing good basketball as well. But I'm still impressed with everything I've seen about the Minnesota Timberwolves. I made a whole video about them like two nights ago, so if you want to really see me dive into the Minnesota Timberwolves, I recommend watching that video because everything pretty much stands the same. That's how you get somebody to watch multiple videos at one time. <laughs> After this video, Timberwolves fans, go back and watch that one because that video did not perform well. The Houston Rockets, bada boom. Um, they beat my Bulls the other night, got their second win of the season. That was even without Jalen Green being there. They had players off the bench just go crazy. Daniel House. I was talking to the homies and I'm like, bro, what, what, would, what would they want for Daniel House? You know what I'm saying? Big dude defends a little bit. Can basically, don't miss from three if he's open. What would they want from him? You know what I'm saying? Um, if anything, anything I want to talk about for them. There are a few players, few rookies. Herb Jones is one. But another rookie who I obviously fell in love with before the draft was uh, Sengun, right? Um, the anytime Sengun is on the court, the offense just looks a ton better. I've watched, I will be honest with you, in the last two weeks, I maybe watched, I've watched three Houston Rockets game. The game against New York where they almost won. Of course, the game where they did beat the Bulls. And there was one more after that. And every time Sengun is on the court, Sengun is on the court. I'm still kind of iffy on that. The team looks dramatically better. And part of that is his playmaking. His defense is, I think, undervalued. I, I think people see tall white center that doesn't move well. Or I guess European senior, sen uh, center that doesn't move well. And immediately think negative defender. I don't think he's that. I, I think the team in general is a negative defensive team. But I think he projects to be, if anything, an average defender in the NBA. That was a fun moment for me too. Um, and once we get to the Bulls, we're going to talk about that more. But I, and listen, 
when your favorite team beats my Bulls, I'm going to throw it. Throw all the hate. I'm not the hate, but the, you know, just talk trash. I like it. Our next team is the Utah Jazz. Okay. Let's talk about the Utah Jazz because they just lost to the Sacramento Kings. And after that game, Rudy Gobert said, I don't know how many how many years we're going to keep losing in the playoffs and not learning from it. I might be 30. I might be 40. We need to put our egos aside and learn. Hmm, very, very interesting. He went on to talk about how, or him and Donovan Mitchell both said in different interviews that they have to be better. And part of this is something I've mentioned um, when, when they did end up getting eliminated from the playoffs last year. The perimeter defense from this team is atrocious. It's like, let's funnel everything to Rudy because he's one of the greatest defensive centers of all time and let him cover everything else up. Well, at some point, you need someone to stay in front of someone because Rudy can't guard five players by himself. So I need Donovan. I need Bogdanovich. I need need all these players to at least give some type of some type of effort on the defensive side of the ball or that elite level defense that you've seen for f four years three years now is now what the 11th defensive for them that's terrible the offensive rating is deceiving for this team and yeah i'm about to spend a little bit over a minute because i want i really want to talk about the utah jazz um the offensive rating is deceiving because if you're looking at the offensive rating right now they like number two in the whole league but when you watch this when you watch them being a close game it's isolation, isolation, and I think a lot of teams do this. This is not a Utah, G, Utah Jazz specific thing, but it's isolation, Donovan, isolation, Donovan, chunk up, contested three. And that's not going to win you a ton of games. As talented as Donovan Mitchell is, it has to be more than that down the stretch. It has to be. The game against the, the Grizzlies, the last couple possessions for the Jazz was terrible. It was legitimately, nobody was moving, nobody was even shot ready, just in case he did kick it out, because everybody knew the ball was going to Donovan, and he was going to try to ice on whoever was guarding him. And when I see a quote like this, I don't know how many years we're going to keep losing the playoffs and put our egos aside, that is talking about somebody or a group of people on this team, and who else could it be? Mike Conley's not bing, 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 isolation. I need the ball right now. Mike Conley's never been there. He's been the most, one of the most unselfish players in the history of basketball. It ain't Bogdanovich. It ain't Joe Ingles. So who is it? Who needs to put their egos aside? It ain't Rudy's not asking for the last touch of the game. I'm just saying. And their sixth man of the year last year has been Bonds. The Utah Jazz got to pick it up eventually, bro. If, like, like if they want to win a championship, which is the goal, we're not playing like a team that wants to compete for a championship. These are Rudy's words. Even the young teams are playing better than us in the clutch. They're not a young team. Donovan Mitchell may be a young star, but everything else, uh, Mike Conley, Bogdanovich, Joe Wingles, these are 30-year-old people, 30-plus-year-old people. Rudy Gobert is up there. Rudy Gay off the bench is one of the oldest players in the league. This is this is a team that should be better in the clutch and have been better in the clutch in previous years. But right now, it's the same old, same old. Man, they got three minutes. Woo! A three-minute segment for the Utah Jazz. I legit wanted to come into today talking specifically about the Jazz, but we'll cut it to three minutes. The Miami Heat are next. I don't know what to really feel about the Miami Heat, if I'm being honest with you. They play against the Bulls tonight, and I'm going to say right now they are probably going to win a back-to-back -back game where the Bulls are coming back from Florida. I'm not giving the Bulls excuses, but I'm just saying. They're well-rested. They had their turkey and then went, went on and relaxed, and we just had to play a dog fight against the best version of the Orlando. Okay, um, I still don't really know what to think about the Miami Heat. I still believe that they're a title contender, but if I'm ranking them amongst the other title contenders, I'm having a hard time placing them like them versus Bucks in the seven. Them, if they made it to the finals, them versus the Warriors in the seven, them versus the Suns in the seven, I don't know where to put them. Um, I, I do think this is a team, it seems like every single year, they make a move um, once we get to the deadline. And I'm not saying they're going to make anything dramatic happen, but just having extra quality players at the end of that bench or, you know, in their rotation would definitely help them. Um, Victor Oladipo, we still don't know what the hell is going on with VO, and I don't know. I don't know if I have any expectations with them at all. I still think the Heat are one of the best teams in the league. Every statistic shows you that. But I'm still trying to figure out where I would rank them in the whole hierarchy of the NBA. Next on the list, we have the Toronto Raptors. We don't really have to talk about Scotty Barnes. I think we can all agree that Scotty Barnes is one of the uh, best rookies in the class. Last night, he had like a 17, 7, 4, and 2 game. Like, he was great. But there's a player who went from super underrated to being an all-star and people realizing that Pascal Siak Spicy P was that dude, NBA champion. And then last year, a lot of the backers of Pascal Siakam 
voided ship. You know, it was anti-Pascal narratives and all of this. And so far, yes, he's only played nine games this season. But in those nine, game, nine games, in my opinion, he's been really good. Now, he's not averaging the 21 points per game that he was averaging the year before that or the 23 the year before that. But in his nine games, he's averaging about 18 points per 47% from the field and about 39% from three. When I am watching Pascal Siakam play this year in comparison to last year, he's not... He's not trying to force anything like he was. I feel like last year he might have came into the season like, okay, I got to prove to the world that I can be the guy. I can be the number one option. I was just an all-star NBA player, and I, I, you know, tried to get my bag a little bit heavier. You know what I'm saying? Last year he took hell of hell, heavily contested pull-up three-pointers. When I watched him, I don't know if I've seen a single one of those this season. It seems like he's getting, yes, he's still getting isolation touches because he's Pascal, but he's, it seems like a lot of his points are coming more in the floor of the offense rather than last year where he was, it seemed like he was trying to prove to the world that he can be that. You, he doesn't have to do that this year. And maybe it's because the Toronto Raptors are 9-11 and 11 or whatever they are, and the team doesn't have a, a ton of expectations since one of their best players, if not their best player, is a rookie. But a lot of people are talking about how solid Pascal Siakam has been again this season. So there you go, Pascal. What is there to say about the Warriors? Um, man, man, man. So the Warriors are sitting at the top of the conference at 17-2. There's a team right beneath them on a 15-game win streak. But the Warriors are still, yeah, we're number one, we're number one in the conference. No big deal. Um, everything about them is just amazing to watch. They are the purest form of just like enjoyable basketball. There's there's nonstop movement. They have the greatest shooter of all time, one of the greatest players of all time, in my opinion, the MVP of the season so far. Even last night, um, last night the boy took over again. Yes, it was against Portland and put the game away, hitting a couple big shots down the stretch. I am so impressed with the team building of this team, how they were able to go get players that maybe were like cast offs. Like for example, Imani Bielitsa, he's been up and down the season, but he's kind of a cast off. He's been on different teams where he wasn't even getting PT. I want to Scott Anderson came out of nowhere a couple of seasons ago. Gary Payton Jr. Couldn't even keep a job for the first couple of years of his career. And now he's like the most efficient player in the NBA because it's all dunks for this six, three center. So yeah, I just, I love watching him play. And then Wiggins recently has been really good. Like, like really, really good. I mean, it is not not as long as I want it to be. Um, 76ers. Hey, I'll be making I'll be making jokes, and it's it's like you know how they say every joke is rooted into some some like honesty or something like that. I'll be making jokes about the 76ers being Tyrese Maxey's team because I I I don't believe it, but it's still like he's been so good this season. Um, and I said this on our podcast today that should have already dropped. If you want to go listen to it, go ahead. That Tyrese Maxey is a player that when I watch him play, he makes me want to go to the gym and play. Now, I play nothing like Tyrese Maxey. I'm one million times worse than Tyrese Maxey at the game of basketball. But the, his brand of basketball is so enjoyable for me to watch. It makes me want to go lace up the kicks. And bro, I've been out of commission for four months now with a shoulder injury. I'm going back tomorrow though. Like tomorrow's my first day on the gym. But 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 when I watch him play, I'm super impressed with him. The team itself, even though right now they're sitting at one game over 500, the fact that they're one game over 500 is the blessing because they've missed a couple weeks of um, Joel, who should be back today. And of course, they still don't have Ben. They've had a lot of virus stuff going on, but they keep having players step up, step up. And Tyreek has made has made the Ben Simmons thing a little bit easier because he is playing so well. Next, you have the Washington Wizards who are sitting at 12 and 7. They got past OKC by the skin of their teeth last night, ladies and gentlemen. I was, I, I was watching. Um, but there's not a lot that I can say about the Wizards that I haven't already said in previous videos. Pretty much everything is, is the same. Last night, we had Daniel Gaffer have a career night. Eight blocks in like 20-something minutes, which is crazy. Daniel D is still clamping up. Bradley Beal is still struggling for the most part. And you would hope that eventually, we don't, they don't need him to average 35 again, um, but they would want him to be more efficient. And so far, they ha they've been able to win games without him playing his best brand of ball. All right, Celtics fans, here it is. I made a video talking about how, how good y'all have been playing in the last 10. That was like three nights ago. And since then, y'all haven't won a game. And I, <laughs> people on Twitter have said the Kenny curse is real. The for real, cur the for real curse is for real. So I've made a decision that I will not talk about the Celtics after today. Um, because every time I do, y'all start to struggle. Whenever I give you, like last night, y'all made that big old comeback against the Spurs, and I tweeted, the Celtics have the lead. Then two minutes later, I had the quote, and it said, the Celtics no longer have the lead. So if you see the rest of the season go on, and I'm not talking about your team, I'm protecting y'all from the Kenny curse. <laughs> I saw somebody in my comments saying that Kenny Loki is a Celtics hater, which I just... I wonder where people start to get those feelings from. What did I say to make you think I'm a hater of your organization? What? 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 
Do you know what? Okay, next team we have is the Phoenix Suns. 15 game win streak, and for the most part, still under the radar, which is a good thing, bro. I'll be seeing uh, Suns fans hit me like, bro, you got to talk about us more. You got to talk about us more. I think teams that stay under the radar benefit from that. There's no spotlight on the fact that y'all are 15 game. Now, tonight, y'all going against um, the Nets and the Barclays, who are the number one team out east, and y'all just beat the Knicks last night. So maybe a schedule loss coming up, but I'm not going to say y'all going to lose because they're as consistent as can be. Devin Booker is in his bag very, very deep. Yes. Yesterday in the garden, <laughs> you can tell that players love playing in the garden for sure. Chris Paul, I love him, but sometimes I feel like he's searching for that assist record, which is fine because the team is on a 15-game winning streak. So I can't tell you to stop passing the ball and score more because even in the closer games, he finds a way to be like, okay, I already got my uh, 13 assists for the night. Let me go ahead and give me a couple buckets and get him a couple buckets down the stretch. Even Mikhail Bridges on JJ's podcast, like, we don't really care – about nobody talking about us on TV or in pocket. Nobody cares about that. We want to go out there and prove to people that last year wasn't a fluke. And so far, they've proved to people, hey, we're still one of the best teams in the league. Just talked about the Suns. Tonight, they go against the Brooklyn Nets. And boom. Um, Kevin Ryan is my second for uh, MVP. They've put it together. Let me... No, 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 no. Not only have they put it together. Let me go ahead and pull up my stats. Because the stats tell me that defense that we was all worried about at for the entire season, they're number 11. And for the last couple of weeks, they've been a little bit better than that. The defense is, is low-key great. James Harden is slowly, slowly coming to himself. LaMarcus All just had the heart thing, pulled him out for a season, and he came back better than ever. Patty Mills, one of the best signings of the season. Um, Blake, Blake Griffin is, ah, Blake Griffin has been really bad this season. He's been really bad this season. And it's hard for me to say that because I'm a Blake fan. But it's been rough. You know, it's been rough. Their ability to close out games seems so easy because you have Kevin <laughs> and Kevin is a walking bucket no matter what time of the game it is but in the last minute or so get out of the way it's Kevin's time the Grizzlies just saw John Morant go down in the injury and I was so afraid because obviously big fan of John Morant he's one of my favorite oh wait he's one of my favorite young players in the entire league I got this signed rookie card from John Morant like like me and John Morant go way back I was interviewing bro like his rookie season and um to see him go down with an injury, what seemed like a non-contact injury was super scary, but it turns out it is just a knee sprain or knee strain or whatever. And no matter how long he's out, the, the Grizzlies are, it's going to be so tough. Because even yesterday, they lost to the Hawks when John Moran went down. They lost by 30. Nobody on that team could create for themselves or other people. They relied on my guy, John uh, John Contrar, to come in and make some plays for them. And, like, it's, go it's going to be rough. They've already been one of the worst defensive teams in the league. And now, without John Morant, they're probably about to crater a little bit on the offensive side of the ball. So, I don't know what the timetable is for a guy that hurt his knee like that. But for their sake, if they're trying to stay in the playoff hunt, you better hope that boy got that super healing ability that Evan Mobley got. And he can come back faster than what they expected. Uh, the Bucks are undefeated when Drew, Giannis, and Chris Middleton play together. That's all. That's all you really need to know. Uh, these boys are coming back and trying to repeat. Uh, Brick Lopez said he's got a timetable for when he's personally going to come back. I don't really have much to say about the Bucks, man. Bobby Portis. I saw some people say uh, Bobby Portis out of nowhere has rejuvenated his career. Everybody knew. If you've watched Bobby Portis since the beginning of his NBA career, you knew that Bobby can score the ball. So when people see his county stats of him averaging 19 points per game in X amount of time since Brooke has been gone, I look at that and I'm like, that's not that much of a surprise to me because Bobby has always been a bucket. People question him on the other side of the ball. So if you're talking about Bobby as, as far as the progression as a player, we got to talk about how good of a defensive player he's turning into, turned into. He's always been a ton of heart, a lot of hustle, and a bucket. It was about the other stuff that was the reason why he was getting traded and he was doing this and that. And I'm happy he's found his home, man. Trey Young is playing some of the best basketball of his entire life. And since they switched the lineup of having Kevin Herter and Bogdanovich in the lineup, the team looks way better. I made this joke on the podcast that you, you knew that Clint Capella was dealing with an Achilles injury for the most of the beginning of the season. As soon as they got back off that road, went uh, West Coast trip, that Achilles looked fine. Clint Capella's playing impactful basketball again, y'all. And because of that, this team that started off so slow is currently on a seven-game winning streak and climbing up the ranks. We have them and the Bucks, teams that we knew were going to be playoff teams for sure, uh, slowly coming back to form. And it, it makes me wonder a little bit, and maybe I'm jumping the gun here, and, and the guy said I was, but I was saying on the podcast, I mean, on here too, that it makes me think about DeAndre Hunter. Not in a, not saying that he's 
not a contributing player. I don't want, I don't want anybody to misunderstand this, but the team has been better without him on the floor, whether it be with him being injuries or stuff like that. So it makes you wonder when he does come back from injury, do they make the substitution of have DeAndre Hunter back in the lineup? And how does that impact the team that's already playing great basketball right now? I mean, those are good problems to have. Too many good too many good players sounds like a good problem to have. Because if somebody gets injured, bada boom, bada boom. The next thing we have is the San Antonio Spurs. Hit that timer. DeJounte Murray, another player that's in most improved candidacy. I'm looking at the stats right here from 16 points to 19 points, from five assists to eight assists, from seven rebounds to eight rebounds, and he closed out games for them. Um, he's been he's been taught by he's been taught by Demar Derozan and that the mid range jump shot is your friend and he's been taking advantage of it. He's definitely one of the best mid range jump shooters in the entire league and he's only what 26 years old, 25 years old or so. He's a fun player to watch. He was an all defensive player one of the first years of his career and though he doesn't have the same I would say defensive impact that he did back then, but the offense is coming around so like you can kind of yada yada yada. Um, he's a cool player to watch. They almost gave up that game last night, but DeJounte hitting shots in the clutch is the reason they were able to close it out. The one thing I think about the Spurs is what what direction are they really going in? Like, yeah, they have some youth. DeJounte Murray being 25, if I'm not mistaken, that boy is on the last couple years of his career. His current contract, oh, he's got th he's got two more years after this. Oh, I was about to say what's going on with DeJounte as a trade piece, but nah, he cool. The Dallas Mavericks are hard to really uh, talk about. We, we mentioned before at the beginning of the season, they were looking like, what did we say? The worst good team in the league or the best bad team in the league, whatever. And then Luka got injured, and then they went on some streaks against the Suns and the Clippers where they played against both of these teams back-to-back. -back. It was very weird. Um, and in those times, without Luka, those teams were staying into games, and Luka came back and ended up beating the Clippers. So I don't really have an opinion about the uh, Dallas Mavericks at the moment. I need to see more of Luka and KP. KP's still playing some of the best basketball of his career, which is great. And I need Luka to get back there, too. He's still coming off the injury, but they won in overtime against the Clips the other night. Right now, if you look at all of their stats, they're sitting around league average at everything. And I would expect... Things will go up when Luka Doncic is back to form. But right now, he's still coming off his injury. And even before then, he wasn't looking like the great level of Luka. But it seems like a lot of the star players that were struggling to start the season have come back to form or close to it. And I'm expecting Luka would do the same thing. Next, we have the Denver Nuggets. Oh, man. The Denver Nuggets season has uh, taken a turn. Taken a turn. Injury after injury after injury. Talk about unlucky. So they have now lost six games in a row. Um, um, Jokic out. Um, obviously, Jamal, Michael Porter Jr. seems like he might be out for the entire season. P.J. Dozier just got uh, injured. It's just like, <sighs> I believe that this team, if they're completely healthy, and I mean completely, completely healthy, will be a team contending, legitimately contending for a championship. That's how talented, how good, how amazing Nikola Jokic is. But with all of this going on, you got to question what the heck they're trying to do now. Okay, we got the Bulls. Um, I mentioned this before. I'm never too high, never too low as a fan, right? When we beat up, when we beat a good team, I'm never saying, ah, oh, NBA championship. Or if I am, I'm saying it ironically or as a joke. And when we lose to a bad team, I'm never like, oh, we're the worst. You know what I'm saying? I never get too high, never get too low. But this is why I really enjoy this season because other people care. I've been making YouTube videos for a decade now. Never before this season where a team would beat the Bulls and I get people in my mentions like laughing or or having fun talking trash. People care about beating the Bulls and that's fun. I dish it out as far as trash talk and I receive it. You know what I'm saying? I hope y'all realize that there's no hard feelings. when we're If I'm going against your team, I might tweet about it, but you have to know it's just in that moment, right? So when we lost to the Houston Rockets, I let y'all have that. Y'all deserve that. You know what I'm saying? It's been fun. It's been really fun. I've said this before. I, I don't, I, I know there are some Bulls fans out there that think we're contenders. I don't think we're in that, that stratosphere of the elite of the elite, but I do think we're fun enough where Bulls fans can be expecting to make a playoff appearance and have some fun. And at the end of the day, that's all I've been asking for for five seasons, and we got it right now. Hey, the Clippers don't play. Um, MVPG13 is a real thing. I don't, I mean, I don't think he's necessarily in the top echelon of people, but I'm just trying to show acknowledgement to, to Paul George's season so far, again, without Kawhi Leonard, and he might be gone for the entire season. We don't really know because it's Kawhi Leonard. You never get a time tip for Kawhi. He's just going to tell you one day I'm ready to hoop. Um, but they said he was working out again, which is a good sign. They're 11 They're eleven and 8. The offense is struggling. Let's be honest. It's the offense is struggling. They don't have a ton of bucket getter type dudes. It's basically, it's basically Paul George and some Reggie Jackson, and occasionally you'll get an Eric Bledsoe game or Zubats gets you like 15 or so. It's not a lot of, it's not a ton of shot creation. 
but the defense. Those dudes have bought in. Um, this season, they're second in defensive rating, and then, oh, I'm sorry, points per possession given up, and then they're number one in the last couple weeks, but the offense has been hit or miss. But if you can hang your hat on the defensive side of the ball, you're going to be a team to reckon with, and that's what the the, the Clippers are right now. The Charlotte Hornets are 8-2 and two in their last 10. They've ended some streaks. Um, ooh, even last night, they they ended the, the Timberwolves streak. So, yeah, streak busters, that's them. I love watching this team uh, play. LaMelo Ball is one of my favorite players to watch because I love a player that can impact the game even if his shot's not falling. For example, yesterday, I think he ended with 10 points. But to me, when I watched it, he was one of the best players on the court, behind Kelly Oubre, of course, because Kelly Oubre occasionally can give you 30 off the bench, and sometimes he'll give you two. It's no in-between. It's 30 or two. Um, <laughs> and I think he averages like 15 points per game. Um, LaMelo Ball, even though... He did not score the ball well. His ability to get his teammates involved is amazing. Even his defense, who people say he wouldn't be a good defender, is good. I, I still wish that this team, and this is not a team trying, I mean, I, everybody's trying to win a championship, but this is not a team that we can all agree is competing for a championship. In the near future, they need to get a big that you can trust on the defensive side of the ball. They've tried, Every single season, it seems like they try and try and try. And they need to just get the guy. I don't know who the guy is or when he'll become available, but if LaMelo Ball had like a good center, GG's. And then thanks to the wheel, the Cavaliers are the, are the last team. I almost said worst team, GG's. The last team. The Cavaliers are one of my favorite league pass teams at the beginning of the season. Season. Because they were running this huge, big, big lineup, and it was working. Evan Mobley was looking amazing, one of the best defensive players in the league. Not just one of the best defensive rookies, but looking like one of the best defensive players in the entire league. Uh, Jared Allen was playing like an all-star. Kyle Sexton was scoring a bunch of points. Darius Garland was coming to his own, and Ricky Rubio was coming off the bench and legit legitimately closing games for teams. And then they got smacked. Kevin Love uh, out COVID. We got Laurie Marketing out. Um, then they had a college sex had done for the season and then Evan Mobley hurt his elbow and they said he was going to be out for like two to four weeks. He was, he was he's back. <laughs> he's back. That's that. That's because he's like 19, bro. I'm telling you, don't take for granted that healing factor. I'm 25. It took me four months to come back from a shoulder injury that normal people probably would have came back in like two months. I'm old in comparison to like Evan Mobley and them. Um, but since they've had all these injuries, it's been hard to watch. But now that Evan Mobley's back, it'll probably be better. That is 30 teams in about one minute each. And yes, I know that this video is way longer than it should be. But I had to do what I had to do, man. Like I said, it should be feel like a pod. should feel like us just chatting about the NBA. I think we did that. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, leave it a like. If if I misspoke about your favorite team, hey, leave it in the comment section, my boy. Like I said, I can't watch all 30 teams in depth, so I might be mistaken on some things.